so I figured I would share this on the Lone Spindle and Mina's Apothecary. It's not really a video on anything. I just, I had, um, just found another box that I had unpacked of some stuff. And some of the oils that I used to use a lot of were in there. So it's been maybe like one or two months since I've actually used them. But I want to show you what, after a while what oils look like using them. So here's one. I just added some more regular oil to the top. So you can see it hasn't even blended with everything in here. And after using these for so long, the outsides kind of get like this yuck on them from because I'm because I'm when usually when using them I have other herbs in my hand or powders or and I'm putting oil in my hand so touching the outside I don't always rub them off <laughs> I don't always wipe them clean so they get like a residue on there my little sister's staring at me like what's going on I'm making a video baby and uh, so this was an herbal blend that I got from Lodestone and Ladies Mantle on Etsy. I think they have a regular website as well. And it was, I got the blend a while ago. Don't forget to close the door. But, um, I think I was supposed to use it as like a poodoo powder or uh, an incense, but I stuck it in the bottle and I added some oil to it. It smelled amazing after a couple days. Um, because I usually like will rub it in my hands and everything. Because I don't use my oils right away. Usually, because I'm usually putting them in herbs, so I'll let them soak for at least two weeks, and then I'll start using them. The longer you let them soak, the more potent they become. And usually, I had essential oils and whatnot as well, but I didn't have to do with this. Um, it's smells amazing on its own. I don't know what's in it, but it's fantastic. And um, this one, you can see, I need to add more oil to it, so I use that a lot. It was um, Kaifi that Conjured Carday on Etsy made. And uh, I stuck some in here to make some kaifi oil. And uh, let's see, maybe I should actually tell you what these oils are for. The first oil I showed you was Kunmi Lover Oil. Hoodoo oils tend to be self-explanatory. I mean, like, some of them, like Van Van, you, the name doesn't give off what it means, but come to me lover, follow me boy, things like that. You kind of get the gist of it just from the name. Fiery Wall of Protection, I tried a description for that when I'm done incense and oils on the one spindle. I don't know how to explain it, I'm just like, it will create a fiery wall of spiritual protection. What more do you want me to say? You know what I mean? There's not much you can say. Um, the kaifi oil, what I was under the impression of was that they would burn it at nighttime, call like the different gods and whatnot to uh, wherever it was being burned. It's just like a sacred incense, like a temple incense. But some people say it could be used for love and love potions. Some say that it, not potions. I keep using that word incorrectly. I think potions are something you actually drink, so... Uh, love incenses and different things like that and um, I usually would wear it just right before I start a ritual to kind of like bring a different kind of energy presence to me if that makes any sense. Here's one there's not much in there because it was powdered and there, there was actually a lot in there before I added the oil so it's not very pretty I'm sorry. Um, I think it filled up like this much because usually I'll do like maybe half a bottle full of herbs because then the oil slips between them and everything. This is uh, Command and Compel Oil, which is calamus root and licorice, um, which I made. Licorice root, not like black licorice or something that you go and buy at the candy store or whatever. Command and Compel, another hoodoo oil. Pretty self-explanatory. You can see I haven't had much use to use it. So I think that's going to change. <laughs> I need some things fixed in my life. Um, this one was uh, Mandrake Oil. It's actually not true mandrake. It's uh, the American version of mandrake, which is may apple. May apple, uh, you can um, repel negativity and get rid of like icky things going on in your life while at the same time drawing in good things, abundance and whatnot. Um, I bought the may apple from Rita, uh, Rita Spiritual Goods. So I just listed three different oils that I made using products that I bought from three other Etsy's on, on or three other Etsy's, three other shops on Etsy. I like to support other sellers as well. When I can, when I had a job, I, I did a lot more than I do now. Now it's like, no, I can't want, I want so bad, but I can't. Especially when I got into Doctor Who, there's so much cool Doctor Who stuff online. But, um, so those are four oils that I'm sharing with you tonight. Um, I hope you found them somewhat informative or something in creating your own oils. I've, I have some videos on the Well and Spindle of classes I taught. I'm pretty sure there's one on there that I've done about creating your own oils. If not, in the future when I make more oils, I can show you how and I'll do it here so you can see it better. And um, so yeah, that's actually, you know, I'm going to show you right now. <laughs> what I usually do is, here's a half ounce bottle. I take my herbal blend 
because if I usually I try to find the essentials of things, but it can be really expensive. So if I can't find it in essential form, I'll find it in herb form. And so if I have a recipe, I'll have whatever scent, I'll put on all the herbs and that I, I usually try and grind them as, as finely as possible. I'll try and put, so also that I feel like it's freshening it too when you do that. I use power dried herbs. Cause I'm afraid with uh, fresh herbs that they will mold in here depending on how much air you trap, the oils you use and whatnot, if they're not preserved well. So dried herbs. So I usually fill from either one third to one half because the oil is going to seep in between all the little creases and when it gets wet they're kind of going to mush together depending on which herbs you're using. If you're using resins and stuff, it doesn't tend to do that unless you really grind them finely. And then I add the essential oils over and I put as much as I'd like, how strong I want the scent. With me personally, I don't put a lot of it because scent can be distracting for me when I'm trying to focus on things. It can also help, but um, when I'm trying to invoke something, so maybe I'll try to be serious and I'll get lavender and there'll be lavender in it for a different use and I'm like start getting too relaxed when I'm supposed to be focusing on something, if that makes sense. Um, so I cover as much as I want with that. I do not recommend filling the whole thing with essential oils. They can be harmful to your skin, plus the scent is going to be really strong. And sometimes with these different recipes and stuff that you'll find, the blends don't always smell that great together. And I personally don't believe that magic needs to smell good, it needs to work. So uh, some of you will make your own blends and you're going to just go through a book and find, here's a list of love herbs and throw every single one in there. It's not going to smell fantastic. So uh, it's trial and error with that. And then usually what I do, I will add, um, so let's say it's filled here with the oils, essential oils, a lot of essential oils. I'll usually fill like maybe another one third with vitamin E oil. And then I use pure sweet almond oil. Um, I know a lot of people use jojoba or jojoba, I don't know how to say it, <laughs> um, or soybean oil or different things like that, but I like the piercing on my oil, I like how it feels on my skin, I like the little bit of the scent that it gives to all my oils, it's not strong or anything, and uh, I don't know, this always worked well for me personally. I know you can get apricot kernel oil that already has a lot of preservative properties in it, but a lot of these oils are a lot more expensive than like, pure sweet almond oil and things like that. Uh, you can use safflower oil, different things. Just make sure you check out the preserving qualities because you could come out with icky oil and see how also how um, well essential oils sit in them. Um, I could do a video on that later, but I didn't really plan on teaching how to make oils right now. <laughs> I just wanted to share these. So that's just a quick introduction in making one. And then usually, um, these ones are screw top lid, but I like to keep mine usually in with the caps like I make with all my other stuff. Cause it just feels more witchy to me. <laughs> um, and then it takes a while for the oil to pull certain properties out of herbs. And then you also want the essential oils to kind of sit and rest and blend together and to create, create kind of like a melody. So basically you're creating a song in a bottle is what I like to think of it as. Um, and then eventually like two weeks usually I try and wait at least please because sometimes I'll send and usually, like, even before I list something, I'll let it sit for a while before, in case somebody buys it right away. So if you're making your own, let it sit for a couple weeks and uh, be patient. <laughs> and the stronger, um, the longer you have it, the stronger and more potent it'll become. Um, I tend to not keep things after a year. But I know a lot of people are not going to go through this much command capel oil and certain things in a year. And there's a d much different views on things. Um, I just feel like as soon as the herbs and whatnot are taken out of the ground, they start to immediately lose potency. Just like when we're first born, we start aging and dying that day. You know what I mean? So um, think of it that way. Um, keep them as long as you want. I know some people that keep their herbs for like five years. I had one person I knew that had herbs for years and years and years and she started making incenses with it and uh, sold them to people later and I'm like, I really don't feel like there's that much good juju in there, anything left. And then she poured her fragrance rolls over the top and I'm like, oh dear. I mean, you could add fragrance oils to your oils as because a lot of people do work off scent and it does create a magical sort of energy for them. So it just depends on the person. Me personally, it's distracting. So I try to keep subtle scents, um, except for my perfume oils that I have at me as apothecary. They're, they're not too strong because, again, um, a lot of people get irritated by the smell. And also, it depends on your, how it works with your body chemistry. Some people, it comes off them more and some people, it creates more of a subtle scent on their skin. So um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my video, my little throw together last minute. I'm glad I knew what to say kind of. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching.